Welcome back to Let's Play Higurashi Tatari Goroshi. I am depressed. Not like oddly depressed, but pretty down. So the word of the day to get out of the way first will be depressing. Yutsuna. I don't know if it brown's down right, it's got drawn out of you by the looks of it. The first character is you, and then it's like ooh, and then it's got another ooh, and then it's got two, and then it's got nah added on. I think for F emphasis. And the pressed itself is Ruchikon I think Ru is added on for emphasis as well again, but anyway, the reason why for that is one of our cats died, got hit by a car that I'm assuming was driven by an idiot, because the part of the road that it apparently happened where my brother had found the cat was this kind of bit where you'd have to stop because like it's a crossing area you know where it's like like part of the road is like you know uh, blocked off by a crossing so it becomes a one-way road temporarily so you have to stop because people could be crossing on the rare occasion I guess but it's mostly so that you'd have to stop when a car's coming the other way but some idiot probably freaking sped through that section and hit the cat and do you just like, it's just like, ugh. We've had that cat since I think, uh, 2014, I think. We haven't had him like, we've had him since he was a kitten. But he, he's just like, that's pretty young, really, isn't it? I remember when we first had him, we were like, uh, I can't remember when it was, but. I, it must have been around about some holiday of some sort. Maybe it was Bonfire Night, or aka Guy Fawkes Night, whatever you want to call it. I'm assuming it was that, but I'm not sure, because I remember this one day where I was like, everyone was downstairs, partying and all that shit, and I was just upstairs, and my internet connection was shit back then. And I could use my mother's room, because I was looking after the cats, and I was like, oh yeah, I finally got a decent internet connection. I remember it. Just looking after these two kittens, because he had a brother who was also passed away quite a while back as well, sadly. And, uh, although my sister was the one who owned that one. And I remember just watching Gintama and the second season series of uh, uh, Mushishi, because I had a decent internet connection, I could be bald to watch shit back then. And I just remember it's like, ah, oh, look at these adorable little kittens. And, like, that's what the earliest memory I can remember, because that was, like, way back at the start when he was still a kitten. And all the moments I can remember of him is he's the cat, essentially, that would always, whenever he'd be in my room, he'd always stalk the bird. He was a crafty little bastard. It's like, I've got, like, this uh, punching bag, like, in the, well, it's not necessarily in the corner of my room, but it's near the bird cage, which is in the corner of my room. And like, because my bird cage, the bird cage is so high up off the ground now, the cat would think more crafty, like look at my, uh, chest of drawers, jump onto that, jump onto my PS3, jump onto the punching bag and go right up to the bird cage. I'd always get him down immediately, but he was a crafty bastard. Anytime he'd be in my room, he'd usually be on this very suit that I'm sitting on, or he'd be on the desk that I'm at. Just either lying there chilling or just staring at the birds. Oh, it's depressing. Like, I think it was yesterday when I randomly, when I was just walking out of my room, I was like, left the door open and I was like, why do I always have my door closed anyway? And I was like, oh yeah, because he would always sneak in and. Ah, oh, it's depressing that, man. Ah. Oh. And all I, one thing I kept freaking thinking about is that one part a while back with Rena, just like, about living life to the fullest and all that, so no regrets, and I was like, God damn it! I don't really, this is like, if that's the case, then I don't really have any regrets when it comes to Minx, that's the name of the cat. He turned into a bit of an asshole, he was like, he was like, more chill in his early days, but then he became more of a kind of independent type cat. Like, my mother had tried to keep him as an indoor cat, but he was having none of that. And in a twisted bit of irony, curiosity killed the cat, because 
That wouldn't have happened if he just decided to, you know, be an indoor cat, but no. Uh, just, just, uh, and when I was uploading the previous part yesterday as I'm recording, and they had that sad music playing, I was just like, oh, you're making me more depressed, man. And this music's mellow as well, so it's just like, uh, I suppose it's fitting for talking about it, I guess. Man, it's gonna be depressing just editing it, because I'll be hearing myself ramble on about it. Well, not only that, but I'm going to show maybe a few pictures of the cats. Insert them here. Yeah. Probably quite a few things I could say about him, really, but... He'll be missed. He's already missed, like... Whenever I walk out of my room and look to the side, I keep expecting to see him just lying there on this uh, drawer or wherever it is that we go in the hallway. Because that's the last, well, one of the last times I saw him. And one thing, like, because he's, like, turned into a bit of an asshole cat where he's like, no, I will not allow you to touch me. And like, this is in the place. This is. But that's usually if you try to pick him up. Like, every time you'd be in my room and I try to pick him up, he'd be like, shit, scram, scram, ha! But what, one time the other day, I'd like, just like, saw him lying there, just like, give him a like, pat on the head. It's like, hey, you go. Which I hadn't done in ages, so I feel like, at least I had got to do something like that before that, you know, rather than it being like, I can't even remember last time I interacted with him in months or some shit. But still, that's depressing. Uh, I remember just looking at all the pictures I've had of him, and he's always in this pose every time. It's like, uh, you amusing little bastards. Uh, with, with all that, how the hell am I supposed to get this recording going smoothly after something like that? Like, I was even thinking maybe taking a break from recording, but I don't know. We'll see, I suppose. Might as well, you know, actually do some recording regardless. It's just like, on my main channel, I've got, like, no, uh, more recording for Wind Waker than in advance, so I've got to do some recording for that at some point as well. And it's just like, all I can think of is, will I bring up this subject at the start of the next part of that, or what? Uh, God damn, this music really brings home the mood of that, doesn't it? We thought that if we could just get a public agency to intervene in the right way, the problem would be solved. So we go for one thing where I'm just rambling on about our recently deceased cat. Now we're going into a plot that involves an abusive uncle and trying to get Satoko out of this situation. I have not been able to do much about. One depressing scenario to the next, man. But with what Coach said, I didn't think it would be so easy. You know, on a lighter note... I've gotten better with the Japanese. It's like, uh, I, uh, I've barely been paying attention to the course. It's just like, I saw like in the corner of the, the screen on my course, it says like, it's got like a kind of completion date, but it doesn't really seem to actually, you know, take effect or anything like that. But it was apparently like, supposed to have been completed way back in April. Four months later, and I'm still doing it. I'm on the last section of it, but still. But one thing I've noticed is while I haven't memorized much in the form of phrases and shit like that, my pronunciation has gotten way better and recognizing Hiragana characters is almost entirely flawless. Uh, Katakana characters really could use some work, but just like they got like this, uh, they got two di different kind of quiz things. One is just like it has like, it'd be like, Choose the correct spelling in this phrase, and sometimes the voice saying the phrase isn't saying a phrase that involves the word, and just like, I think somebody who put this course together done fucked up on that one. 
It's confusing, like, sometimes, like, you got these, you got these two Japanese people, a male and a female, and they're, like, teaching you these phrases, but sometimes the voice coming out of them isn't their voice. It's clearly someone else. It's like an older, more mature woman, and then there's a somewhat more mature woman. It's just like, where do those voice actors came, come from, and why? Did they just, like, forget to voice it? I don't know. But, uh... Like, there's one quiz that's like that, it's like, oh, what's the correct spelling? Choose the correct picture for this phrase. What would you use to reply to this, and so on. And then there's a voice recording one, where you read out the phrase yourself, and see how it matches up to the actual one that voiced it, and rate it. You get to rate your own thing, so you could be like, oh, oh that was perfect, that was perfect, but I don't do that. I do it based on how well it adds up. Like, if my pronunciation is flawless and the way I say it is flawless, 10. If it's kind of there, but not quite, I give it like, eh, in between. If it's nothing like it, I give it a zero. But lately, I've been giving it more tens and fives, because I can, like, casually say it really easily. Like, where's my notes? Let's read out a phrase randomly. Actually, this... Where is it? There's one involving numbers. Yeah, here it is. Could you ask him to call me back? My number is 291377. It's a mouthful in Japanese, but it's actually really easy. Kuchira ni o denwa e tadakimasu ka? no bango wa nikyu ichi san na na I can speak it flawlessly, like, naturally, rather than being like, uh oh, I gotta pause in between. That's, that's definitely an improvement. Now I can actually speak it a bit more naturally, where I'm not stumbling over the words as much, and having to pause all the time. Because it only gives you a certain window of time to actually say the entire phrase, so I don't struggle with that. Now I can even freaking do it in a sing-song voice if I wanted to. Anyway, back to the plot. Stoker was up late and she would stumbly deny the abuse and try to endure it. Probably pronounced one of her words wrong. And that was an act of atonement towards Satoshi, who protected her before and then run away. So long as she fought that way, the situation wouldn't be so simple. But earlier, before coach, I made a clear declaration. If I thought Satoshi was in danger, then I would do what I had to. In the end, that meant I was just going to wait and see too. Nevertheless, I thought I'd draw a clearer line than Coach or my friends had. When the time came, I would report it. Over the film. Here's the talk with personality, and she would criticize me if she found out. But I believe it was ultimately the best decision. Wait, Coach Mabara. Would that really be all it took for the problem to end? See that I report it to a public agency like the Child Ventilation, etc. Or did they stuck to their wait-and-see attitude like last year again? Last year they decided to do just that, and the situation improved temporarily. Then the aunt, thinking herself a laughing stock, increased their tormenting in secret. In the end, things became more underhanded than ever before. This year it was her uncle. I had just seen him for the first time today, but the man seemed much more direct, much more violent than the word underhanded could imply. He wasn't like their aunt, no, not that subtle, he was more direct. He might also assault her with punches and kicks. That could easily be discerned from the bruises and such I saw on Sadoka's body. Shit, you're too naive, Keiji Maibara. However heroic it may seem to report what was happening, if it doesn't save her, then it doesn't mean anything. Reporting things to a public agency was only one option, and leaving everything to them would be dangerous. We would need something more to guarantee some of safety. I scratched madly at my head, thinking, then tilted it back, wanting at least a little bit of color. The memories of angry arguing with my friends today came to mind. And I'm just realizing this. It's obviously probably mostly due to my kind of, like, uh, mood. But the way I'm reading all that is bit more in tune with my regular voice than anything else. Usually I like to into random goofy voices, but clearly because I'm, you know, not feeling it, it's like more of my normal voice, really. Obviously with that kind of uh, 
going great, but it's closer than it usually is, I guess. I'm reading it kind of like a normal person for once. I was embarrassed that I hadn't realized it until Rent said something. She was right. My house is big. It's kind of an odd shape as well, isn't it? Compared to all the houses with the straw thatched roofs in it was our, it really was big. We did actually have empty rooms. I never thought that we were affluent, but also never that we were poor. I just didn't admit it because people would think I was arrogant. But maybe my family really is wealthy. We had a few rooms we could lend to Sudoku. The guest rooms are only in use when people related to my dad's job come and stay every once in a while. Plus, if we cleaned up a few of the rooms my dad uses for storage, they could work for as well. As for food expenses, that might have been a more serious problem than a kid like me could imagine. Lunch every day would be manageable. All of our friends would just have to bring a little bit more for lunch than they usually did. With everyone pecking out everyone else's food anyway, it would be manageable. You know who doesn't? Rika, when she lived with Satoko, she always brought her lunch anyway, really, and she still does. For breakfast and dinner, though, that would have to be up to Mum. I would need to convince her to lend Satoko more than just a room. Of course, I don't even think convincing her of that would be easy. But how much did it cost for one person to eat? How many tens of thousands of yen per month? They couldn't complain about it if I shouldered that, could they? I only had ten or twenty thousand yen in savings, but it was something. I actually had even more, thanks to New Year's gifts and such, but my parents had taken all that and put it into a fixed time deposit. If I could get access to that, it should have added to a lot of money. If I got that far, Mion and Ren would need to share some of their burdens of the burden. Of course, that didn't seem like it would work. Ren got mad at me, didn't she? About how I shouldn't just shove responsibility onto others. I'd have to ask for help. Even so, I'd basically be saving her myself. I would follow through on it. Oh, but it wouldn't be only food expenses. There were a lot of other things that you couldn't do without, like baths and laundry. My mother was awfully methodical and strict about cutting out inefficiencies and for once that was troublesome. She might even make reference to the money it would cost for the detergent Sadoka would use for her own clothes. I couldn't think only about food expenses. I needed more money. Hey, white cage, my bar, since when was all this about money? Even if you could afford it, you would need your parents' permission first. They'd be looking after a young girl for a really long time. What would I say to persuade them? Just calm down a little bit, Cage my bar, and you'll realize right away that you can't. Even if you asked them seriously, they would tell you to call the police. Even if you managed to gain their empathy, why should the my bar family have to shoulder all of the burden by itself? That's what would happen. That was it. It was very sad and frustrating, but no matter how much I wanted to help, my resolution alone couldn't save anything. My kids, are they really as powerless? I felt frustrated. I believed my feelings were stronger than anyone else's. I even thought they were stronger than coaches. And yet... At that point, there were two knocks at my door and Mum poked her head inside. Are you awake? I've been calling you for dinner for a while. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm coming. As someone financially dependent on his parents, I shouldn't say this, but I just sat around doing nothing and food suddenly appeared. It felt so natural to me that I shamelessly thought of it as the responsibility of the parents who gave birth to me. But when I realized that natural thing was actually a privilege, I came to realize just how hard it was to grant that privilege to others. Even the boring meal in front of me no better than it ever was. I have more meaning than that tonight. There is food for free on the table right now. For Dad, for Mom, and for me. I couldn't imagine how hard it would be to add another plate there. Place at the table? Well, I saw it's that. That's Think, Cage and Obara. If it was hard to make food before, you'd just think about how poor people could eat food made free. I 
I don't know why I'm just thinking of like my own fat family in comparison because Katie's an only child, but I actually have siblings. Oh, I changed around the way of thought and with that I began to consider an unthinkably bold plan. That's right. I didn't need to get my parents' permission. She should just live here in secret. I got upset when I found out a while ago, but if I run right, I climbed up the window then shimmered down the first floor roof for I got her and you could go in and out of the house directly from my room. But the physical ability far surpassed my own, so it'd be even easier for her. You really think that's gonna work, KT? I hadn't even thought about it, but her living here secretly was actually a necessity. I'd only have to bring support to my house when the public agency said they would wait and see. In other words, if Sakoka's uncle would continue to be her god. If in such a situation the word got out that she was here, her uncle would barge in and drag Sakoka back with her. The uncle was her rightful guardian, so my parents would hand her over without an argument, no doubt. So I needed to keep the secret that she was living here. If it needs to be a secret, then having my parents help would mean a lot, but you got to deceive your allies first, like they always say. Okay. Persuading my parents was an unrealistic proposition, so I searched for a way to have her live here in secret. When I was around, she would just have to be really quiet in my room on the second floor. The issue was a day girl. She was hiding from her uncles, and she shouldn't go to school. It might be lonely, but not just telling would be the better option. I could easily teach the stoker the stuff she learned in her grades. Actually, during school, I mostly help all the young kids out while they were studying my own stuff. During the day, I would need to go to school so I wouldn't be at home. My parents respected my privacy now that I was this age, so they wouldn't be ghosts sticking around in my room while I was gone. They're just thinking of way, just like said, or just like, oh, you know, I, I'm at, at a higher grade in school, so I could teach her uh, stuff because I've gone over that shit. Imagine if there was like a big year gap and you'd be like, oh yeah, I did that shit back in the day. It's like, then you actually get to the subject. It's like, what the fuck's this shit? I didn't learn this shit back in the day. Uh, my parents expected my privacy now that I was this age, so they wouldn't go sniffing around in my room while I was gone. Think. If she held herself up in my room, it would be okay, right? My parents did come thanks to where the second floor was. She could hear their approach from the sound of them coming up the stairs. And there would be a little bit of time before they got all the way up. It's made a few seconds, but she would be able to hide herself in the closet. So was a closet, man! This makes me think of Bleach. Like, in its earlier episodes and chapters, where Rukia pretty much crashed at Ichigo's house, living in the closet. It's always the closet, man! And I also remember, like, reading about, like, some Japanese woman, like, living at some uh, guy's house or apartment without him knowing for months and she was, like, living in the closet and when he'd be out, that's when she'd roam about and, you know, use the shower and, like, cook or whatever, I can't remember. I mean, that is creepy. Wait, wait, KG. Something doesn't make sense. If she can't go to school, then what will she do for lunch? Calm down already. I could just leave her my own lunch, couldn't I? I should just go to school at lunch and get everyone else to split theirs with me. Okay, that's good. No more contradictions or oversights, right? You know, it may be a terrible idea, really, when you really think about it, but you can kind of see from Katie's point of view, he's desperate for a resolution to the situation, so... You pretty much take anything at this point. Oh, breakfast and dinner. I could somehow get her to go without breakfast. I can go with two meals a day when I sleep in on Sundays, after all. Every night I'd pretend as though I had a bigger appetite and ask for a bigger helping. And then I could just somehow give part of that to Sudoku. As a test, I stood up from my seat with my plate of fish in my hands. What's wrong, Katie? Sit down and eat your food. Um, well, I'm kind of not in a good mood. Could I eat up in my room? I'll make a mess. Eat dinner at the dinner table. Uh, sorry. Hey, wait. I'm trying to take away one plate of fish and they ganged up on me. 
It's like, but Keiichi, you'll make a mess. That fish may fall on your bedroom floor. In reality, it was impossible for me to smuggle food away without my parents knowing about it. But it's, it must have been worth taking the time to think about it. There must be some tricks, some method to avoid them realizing. Even if I can't think of one today, I'd like to think of one tomorrow. My appetite was rapidly fading, so I finished early and went back to my room. I went back there and I t and tried to think about it from Sudoku point of view. For example, let's say my parents were coming up the stairs right now. I'd be at the heart. I'd be in the closet. Let her cook. It didn't open quietly. Hey, wait. Didn't it always open real smooth and quiet? Why was it suddenly doing this now? What is this, a faulty house? Faulty towers? Had it already gotten old or something? Or was I just not put enough work into it? Did I just plaster it with wax? The sound itself may have been soft, but it left me uneasy as to well my parents could detect it happening when they climbed the stairs. If this was an easy problem, I could do something about it. I just had to fix it up a little bit so it didn't make noise anymore. Now I'll close myself in the closet as though I successfully hid. I basically always left my food on that on the floor. I couldn't think of any real reason my parents would want to go into my closet. Even so, there still might be some reason they would. I might need to construct some sort of camouflage so that she wouldn't be noticed even if they did open it. But the more she worried about that, the less time she'd have to actually hide, meaning it would be more likely they'd hear a noise. And then, I suddenly had to go to the bathroom. The bathroom? The need to use the toilet so obvious and yet such a fatal flaw. The only bathroom was on the first floor. It would be absolutely impossible for her to use it without my family realizing. I might need to set up a portable toilet, like a cheaper one, I guess. So I would hate it, so she could go in my room. But the stench would be pretty terrible. Anyone sensitive would probably notice a smell without even coming into the room. The bath was okay, though. She could just take a bath when my parents were out. But I couldn't do anything about the toilet. When her stomach started to hurt, if my parents were lazing around downstairs, she'd be in trouble. It was then that I noticed that I'd been clawing at my head with both hands. I sat down in the dark closet with my knees against my chest. I buried my face in them and tore out my hair. The more I fought, the more contradictions popped up. The more I fought, the more things failed. And the more I worried, the more I was reminded of how little power I actually had. My back started to hurt from staying in a cramped place for so long. But if I was to shelter Sudoku, I would need to force her to feel this pain. To live in such a dark, narrow, suffocating place forever. But it would still be better than being abused by her uncle, so I wanted to think. It got hard to breathe, so I gave in and crawled out of the closet. I looked at the clock, and to my surprise, it was 3.30 in the morning. It had felt like so little time, but it was so unbelievably long. When I realized that time, I slammed her a terrible voice of sleep as if the time had only just put up with me. I didn't have enough strength to fight it, and I fell flat onto my food on. Shit, I can't go to sleep like this. If I waste any time, that'll mean I'm taking the same emergency attitude that me on a coach and everyone else did. I needed to keep worrying about how to rescue the stoker for a or even a second longer than everyone else. Isn't there a better way? Isn't there a better way? And one phrase I spoke to myself swirled around and around in a spiral and steadily took over my entire mind. For my last moment of consciousness, I thought. There were a lot of blind spots in what I had considered tonight, but I absolutely wasn't wrong to have those ideas. Tomorrow I would suggest this bold plan to the others. Neon might be able to help somehow with Renault's real shot, so she might have a good suggestion. Above all, we need to rescue Sudoku once again, with everyone helping out. I felt pathetic for letting myself fall asleep. I'm sorry, Sudoku. Wasn't the usual transition to another day, is it? 